Oh, hello. I'm back again. This time with the new nose piercing. Aren't I like an e-girl? Isn't it awesome? I know it really is. Okay, so tonight's story is going to be the second part of my Chicano history of activism in California. This one is about the Zoot Suit Riots. But firstly, let's get down to the hydration. I have here this beautiful coffee mug thing, thermos I guess, and what's in this? Ice cold water. You might remember this from the very first video, where this dang cup of water kicked my butt and I couldn't finish it. Well guess what? I'm back again, I'm yearning for punishment, and you know what I'm really yearning for? Hydration. There was more ice cubes in it, they melted, trust me, it's cold as crap, so... Don't give me that. I need to make sure this water bottle right here is in the picture. I'm not being advertised, but unless Calistoga you want to get involved, hit me up. But I'm sure you want to wait until I'm more professional and not wearing anime cosplay wigs. But okay, here we go. <clears throat> Holy shit, that's cold. I'm finishing this, but damn. Whew. Oh my god, I got a brain freeze. Mm, burping from water actually feels really good though. It's probably the only burp that feels that freaking amazing. No, I don't have an iron deficiency. I'm just chewing the, the ice cubes so I can stop being so freaking cold. Oh my god, this is so cold. This was a terrible idea. Okay, I finished it. It's okay. It's just carpet. <clears throat> so let's get down to brass tacks. <clears throat> It's really dark in these sunglasses, so it's going to be quite the sloppy video. <coughs> so let's start off. The Zoot Suit Riots. What were they? Well, it was a night of terror where Navy servicemen marauded around L.A. just beating up Chicano teenagers. What led up to this? Well, I'm glad you asked. Let's get into it. It started in August 1942, when a boy named Hank Labos and his girlfriend were swimming at Sleepy Lagoon, I assume it's by Los Angeles, and during their swim sesh, a group of men came up and beat the crap out of them. That's freaking awful. Uh, later that night, Hank and his friends would go cruising around for the people that did this, and they wanted revenge. <clears throat> oh, there's that water burp again. They heard that some of these people were at a party, so they went to that party and they were going to, well, let's say be party poopers. Um, when they arrived, they saw a one Joey Diaz lying on the grass in front of the, the house, bleeding out. And the girls went up and tended to him, but Hank and his, and his male friends, they went inside the house and they were like, well, I don't know what's going on with this guy, but... We got some asses to kick. So they went into that house and they kicked some freaking asses. Like, hardcore. Uh, 
During this time, though, people were already suspicious of Chicano teenagers, and newspapers were labeling them threats to society. Uh, during this time, kids wore this dress called a zoot suit, and what that was is like a regular suit, but it had ballooned pants, and it was tight at the knees and the ankles, and they had like tight shirts, but they had like big jackets, sometimes big hats. I'll show you some pictures of that. So, right here we got a group of fine looking Chicano men having a great time in their zoot suits. See how big those freaking pants are? That's pretty awesome. Got another guy here having a great time. Really huge chain. I like it. Very into the accessories. And it was so big about in culture at the time, like they were making movies about it. Here's a poster from the movie called Zoot Suit. I don't know if this camera's probably showing it in reverse, so you can't see it, but look, there it is. I think that's a huge chain. <sighs> I actually want to get one. It's pretty awesome, it looks like. Alright, so that's the Zoot Suit. Uh, the kids that wore these were labeled by the community as pachucos, or also known as, you know, punks. And white people were freaking terrified of pachucos. Absolutely terrified. And this term was used against them to label them the threat. Part of a long line of institutional violence that, that Chicanos have faced throughout the years up to that point, even, you know, since the Mexican-American War. And Chicanos were viewed as foreigners in Los Angeles. I know I mentioned this in the last video, but it's still 20 years later after the Lemon Grove incident, and they're still looked at as, like, outsiders of their own city, even though 100 years before the Zoot Suit riots, Los Angeles and California at large was a part of Mexico. And so in the wake of, oh yeah, sorry, Joey Diaz would later die of bleeding out. There was nothing they could do. And then in the wake of his death, the police went on an all-out assault on the Chicano community. They would go into these neighborhoods and they would just pick up and beat any Chicano teenager they could find. They picked up 600 kids. It was so rampant boys couldn't even walk the streets like parents would say you need to stay inside it is way too dangerous for you like there's no telling what's going to happen when the los angeles pd picks you up as we all know um the police would just grab you and besides the fact the police were already routinely beating up chicano men so way to go lapd you're really phenomenal here uh hank Levos himself had a ton of run-ins with the police. Uh, he knew the system was designed against him. And I'm sorry I'm reading from these notes, but I'm sure I'll get better at some point. I figured the outfit would be a great distraction from my horrible narrating skills. Um, so yeah, Levos, he knew the shit was fucked up. And he would constantly challenge people and challenge the police. And so they already knew who he was, so he was already a target, already a scapegoat of this shit. <clears throat> Frank and 21 other boys would end up being arrested for the murder. They said they did fight people that night, but they are not responsible for Joey Diaz's death. Like, remember as I said earlier, they came to the house and he was already there bleeding. So, I mean, but, you know, when you're the Los Angeles PD, you just, you need a brown person to grab. So, I guess that's how they do it. Um, faced with immense abuse by police, like these boys were roughed up when they got picked up. So bad so that Hank's sister couldn't even recognize him. He had a completely swollen face, black eyes, like he looked horrendous. None of the boys were given haircuts and they refused to change the clothes. And this is over a month period. And this was all intentional to make them look like vagabonds in front of the jury. Because if you're clean cut, they're going to be like, oh, well, these are obviously nice boys. Why, how are we supposed to think they did it? But if they look like ruffians or rapscallions, then in the eyes of 1940s white America, you're pretty much signing your own life away. 
1943, 17 defendants were found guilty. Lavos was given life in prison, and the boys were all sent to San Quentin. The case reached national attention, and in Los Angeles, a coalition of like actors, communists, and union members, they set up this nationwide, like, come send money so we can get these boys an appeal, and money came from everywhere in the United States. Everyone saw this, and they were like, wow, these kids got screwed over. We need to freaking help them. And during this time, like I said earlier, World War II was happening. So now we're going to start getting to the riot territory. And because World War II was happening, sailors were being... Sailors were being shipped to L.A. before being sent to the Pacific. Now these sailors were being shipped in from all over the United States. And they weren't used to Los Angeles diversity, even though it's a freaking really segregated place. Um, so the Navy's armory, where all these sailors were hanging out at, was right by a Chicano neighborhood. And L.A. was still heavily segregated at this time. It still is, though, but that's for a later video. Constant skirmishes were already happening between these teenagers and the Navy servicemen. And, you know, teenagers internalized the segregation, and they resented white people, and they resented especially white servicemen walking through their neighborhood. So if you just see all these freaking Army or Navy guys coming in, you're like, F you, I'm going to kick your ass. And so each fight that would happen would lead to the next fight. Like, oh, they kicked our ass. When we see them, we're going to kick their ass. So on June 1943, a gigantic fight broke out between suit suits and Navy servicemen. And this night, the riots would begin. Servicemen would end up going all around L.A. And they would be beating up any man they saw wearing the suit suit. Any Chicano man. They would run into movie theaters and pull people out and beat the crap out of them. A 12 and 13 year old boy were literally beaten up, had their clothes ripped off their backs, and burned. So the riot started out against the zoot suits, but it turned purely racial from that point. And you know what? It was like that from the beginning. White citizens, this is evidence of the racial thing, white citizens would come out in support of the Navy men. And they, this one lady in the documentary, and I'll have a link for that, this lady in this documentary said she thought she was helping the war effort by helping beat up other Chicano, by beating up Chicano teenagers and giving support for the Navy people. And, you know, I really don't find that literally ripping the clothes off of children's bodies and then burning them could be positive in any situation. But, I mean, maybe that's just me. But I'm a guy in a wig. What do I know? So, the police were there, of course. The wonderful LAPD up to their old, beautiful stuff. They only intervened in any of these fights when the Chicano teenagers would get the upper hand. And they would arrest the Chicago teenagers. Oh, but don't worry. They would pick up the Navy men as well. Except to drive them a few streets away and let them out. And tell them, get back to the barracks. Zero. Zero Navy servicemen were arrested for violence. By the way, that night. And the zoot suit during this time, because of the, the fights that were happening earlier with the skirmishes between the Navy and the Chicano teenagers, the zoot suit was made illegal. If you were caught wearing a zoot suit, you could get 30 days in jail. And then, so I'm going to read a quote from the documentary. You can kind of see it in my screen right here, in my eyeglasses. And so this was a guy who actually was a zoot suit. He said that Mexican-American youth during wartime America were taught that they couldn't choose by themselves the way to express themselves and you know I don't think they ever were allowed to express themselves in any way that they felt was okay they were just enforced by the system to step in line and you know and anyone who stepped over segregated lines they were smacked down they were smacked down by the system and they were smacked down by 
the other white citizens of Los Angeles. And I mean, this is common throughout the entire United States at this time. And it's definitely reflected in what's going on today. Um, let's see. Frank especially was getting smacked down by the state in Los Angeles at this time. And, you know, kids wanted to leave the neighborhood. They were locked into these neighborhoods by racism. They were yearning for a place at the American table. And wearing this zoot suit, that reflected that. That reflected their ideals of, like, America and being cool. And America at large was not having that at all. And so, Lavos and the boys... This is, the, this is after the riots. Lavos and the boys were still in prison for another two years before they were given appeal. Two more years after this horrific night of violence happens. Two more years, and then they're finally given appeal because they were not given a fair trial. And then on 1944 of October, they were all set free. And you know what? Lavos came out of the courthouse wearing a zoot suit in direct defiance of the white supremacist state that put him there. And so the Pachucos won that battle, but Lavos's life would remain in turmoil. He would be in, he'd be constantly picked up by the police. He would, became a severe alcoholic, and in 1971, he would die in a bar fight in Los Angeles. And I think that's probably the most tragic thing that could happen right now. They did find Diaz's killer, though. But the killer had nothing, no relation to Labos's crew. And, and it, they wouldn't even find Diaz's killer until decades after this incident happened. When Diaz's killer died, and then his sister finally admitted that he did it. And so that concludes the Zoot Suit Riots. And I know I'm very awful at this, and I will get better at it. But I've decided, I've come up with a name for this series, or any time I'm going to talk about history, and it's going to be called Hydrated on History. I'm going to change the name of that last video, because it says Mentally Unhinged, and I'm pretty sure, one, that's not really too respectful. I mean, obviously I'm wearing this shit, but I'm sorry. This is how I express myself. And two, I think, uh, maybe I'll get more subscribers. So subscribe and tell your friends to subscribe. All right. I'm going to include in the description links to the documentary, links to some really cool sources, a bunch of information on the Zoot Suit Riots. And the next video will be the third part of my Chicano activism history of California, where we'll go 20 years in the future to the blowouts. And the blowouts were a series of demonstrations by Chicano teenagers demanding better treatment at the schools that they were going to. Like, they weren't allowed to go to the bathroom during lunch. They were had falling apart classrooms. They weren't allowed to speak Spanish in schools. Like, holy crap. And, well, that's going to be it. Okay, goodbye.